Today we'll discuss about the localization of stroke. Before we go on to discuss the localization of stroke, we need to know about the blood supply of brain. Brain is primarily being supplied by three major arteries, anterior cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery and posterior cerebral artery. We'll try to look at the territory of each of these arteries. This is the lateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere. This is the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere. And this is the basal surface of the cerebral hemisphere. Now we'll discuss the territory of each of these arteries. So the major artery which supplies the lateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere is the middle cerebral artery. It supplies the majority of lateral surface of cerebral hemisphere except the frontal pole and a strip along the superior medial border of the frontal and parietal lobes. It is being supplied by the anterior cerebral artery and the lower temporal and occipital pole convolutions which is being supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. Rest of the lateral surface of cerebral hemisphere is being supplied by the middle cerebral artery. This is being supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. And the lower temporal and occipital pole is being supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. Now if we look at the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere, so only the temporal pole is being supplied by the middle cerebral artery. The majority of medial surface of cerebral hemisphere is being supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. It includes the prefrontal cortex, the sensory leg area, the motor leg area, the supplementary motor area, the paracentral lobule, the cingulate gyrus, the corpus callosum. So all of these structures which are present on the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere are being supplied by the anterior cerebral artery. And the rest of the medial surface of cerebral hemisphere is being supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. Again, the temporal and occipital lobe cortices. Now we look at the basal surface of the cerebral hemisphere. So the middle cerebral artery, the anterior cerebral artery, it supplies a strip on, on the medial surface of the basi frontal cortex. The rest of the basi frontal cortex is being supplied by the middle cerebral artery and also the temporal pole region. So this is the territory of middle cerebral artery on the basal surface. And the main artery of supply on the basal surface is the posterior cerebral artery. This all area is being supplied by the posterior cerebral artery. Artery. So I think so far it is clear that the main artery of supply on the lateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere is the middle cerebral artery. On the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere is the anterior cerebral artery and on the basal surface of the cerebral hemisphere is the posterior cerebral artery. Now we, are, we will go on to discuss the significance of each one of them. So first of all we will take up the anterior cerebral artery syndromes. So 
so the anterior cerebral artery stroke in isolation accounts for less than 3% cases the main cause of anterior cerebral artery syndrome is the infarction due to vasospasm following subarachnoid hemorrhage due to rupture of anterior cerebral artery or anterior communicating artery aneurysm so the most important cause is vasospasm following subarachnoid hemorrhage due to rupture of anterior cerebral artery or anterior communicating artery aneurysm now what will it result in that will depends upon the territory to which it supplies now it supplies i have told you it mainly supplies the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere so what all things are being are represented on the medial surface of the cere cerebral hemisphere they are motor leg area the sensory leg area the paracentral lobule which is the highest center of maturation the supplementary motor area the cingulate gyrus the corpus callosum the frontal cortex near leg area now we will discuss what will be the impact of involvement of each one of these areas so this is this is the motor leg area this is the sensory leg area and here it only is the paracentral lobule just anterior to motor leg area is the supplementary motor area this is the cingulate gyrus just superior to corpus callosum and this one is corpus callosum and then the frontal cortex near the leg area apart from that we have prefrontal cortex also which the involvement of prefrontal cortex results in cognitive and behavioral abnormality now due to involvement of motor leg area there is contralateral leg paralysis similarly due to involvement of sensory leg area there is sensory loss over cortical sensory loss over contralateral leg due to involvement of paracentral lobule which is the highest center of maturation there is urinary incontinence due to involvement of supplementary motor area there is contralateral grasp reflex the primitive reflex they appear contralateral grasp reflex sucking reflex and gegenhalten now what is this gegenhalten gegenhalten which is also called as paratonic rigidity it is a type of rigidity it is a type of increase in tone that varies irregularly throughout the range of motion unlike spasticity in spasticity there is increased resistance to motion during the initial uh, part of the motion but in gegenhalten there is increase in tone that 
varies irregularly throughout the range of motion and it affects the flexors and extensors equally unlike the rigidity. So this, this dead and Hilton, it is classical of frontal lobe involvement. It is also called as paratonic rigidity. Now due to involvement of cingulate gyrus, there is ebullia. Now what is ebullia? Ebullia is lack of initiative, lack of will, lack of spontaneity. There is akinetic mutism. In its severe cases, it can result in akinetic mutism. So due to involvement of cingulate gyrus, there is slowness in activities, there is delay, there is intermittent interruption. So there is lack of initiative, there is lack of will, which is called as ebullia. Now due to involvement of corpus callosum, it classically result in callosal apraxia. Now what is this apraxia? Apraxia is lack of performance of skilled learned movements despite normal power and coordination. So, callosal apraxia is, it includes the dyspraxia of left limbs. That means, supposedly I tell a patient to comb his hair with his right hand. So he is able to perform this activity with his right hand but when I tell him to do the same activity with his left hand so he is not able to do that. So there is dyspraxia of left limbs. The patient is not able to perform skilled learned movements with the left limb because corpus callosum is the primary connection between the two cerebral hemisphere. So if there is an infarct of corpus callosum so split brain occurs. This is what happens also in agenesis of corpus callosum or called as ACARDI syndrome. The patient is not, has to learn activities individually with the uh, both hands. He is not able to do the things with the left hand which he is able to do with the right hand. So this is callosal apraxia. Also there can be tactile aphasia. Now what is this tactile aphasia? Tactile aphasia means the patient is able to identify the objects tactually. If you hand over him a coin, so he's able to identify that it is a coin, but he's not able to name it. That is called as tactile aphasia. Now frontal cortex near leg area, it results in gait apraxia. It is also called as frontal ataxia. Now what is it? It means there is difficulty in initiation of walking. When you check the power of the patient, when you check the coordination of the patient in lying down position or in the sitting position, it is absolutely normal. But when you ask him to walk, so there is a difficulty in initiation of walking. There is broad based step, there is broad based and there is small steps and there is a tendency to fall backward. It is classical of frontal ataxia or gait apraxia which is seen due to involvement of frontal cortex near the leg area and due to involvement of prefrontal cortex there is cognitive and behavioral impairment. So if you come across a patient who has a complex of these symptoms so you should think of ACA syndrome.